So having an emergency stop switch is very important if you want to stop the machine in a hurry if something goes wrong. So I'm going to build an enclosure to mount the switch, but I also want to install this reset button so I can reset the software once the condition is corrected. So if you're interested to build something like this for your machine, then just watch the whole video because I'm going to show you how to wire this switch, how to build a circuit to power the blinking part, and what software modifications you have to do on Mac 3 to actually make it to obey the command. Wiring the e-stop switch to the breakout board. The e-stop switch has two contacts, normally open and normally closed. Select the normally closed. These are the terminals that have continuity when the switch is not pressed. Connect them between pin number 10 and ground on your breakout board. Then go to Mac 3, click on configure or send pins, input signals, down to e-stop, make sure the port is set to port 1 and is set to pin number 10, then unselect active low. Click apply and close the window. Make sure and save these settings. Mapping the reset button to the keyboard controller. I'm using an illuminated arcade button with a 12 volt LED, but we need the LED to work with 5 volts. You can disassemble the switch and change the resistor with the correct one usually 330 ohms, one quarter watt resistor on a 5 volt circuit. Also, we will need a USB keyboard controller. If you want to know how to locate the keys on a keyboard controller, watch my video where I find the piece on a keyboard. Link on the description. Once we located the right contacts on the keyboard controller, we're going to connect it to the normally open and common pins on the arcade button switch. Creating a hotkey on Mac 3 screen editor using a single key on the keyboard controller. Now open the Mac 3 screen editor, select page 0, at the properties window, click on the reset button, go to properties, select hotkey, double click on OEM3. Now activate the arcade button, so whatever key you selected on the keyboard controller will be set as hotkey, in this case F1. You can go back to page 1, go to file, save file as then choose a name for your file. We're going to save it as a set file. Close the window and exit the editor. Build in the timing circuit that will make the button LED blink. I designed and built this PC board to make the LED blink. It uses a transistor to turn a 555 timer on and off. The interval in which the light will blink depends on two resistors and a capacitor. The reason we had to make this circuit independent from Mac 3 is because once Mac 3 enters into an emergency stop condition, the software will shut all the outputs to the CNC controller off. Therefore, it won't be any signal available to turn the button LED on. You don't have to have a PC board to wire these components, but it will make it easier. You can also use a perforated board and solder all the components to it. If you want, you can pause the video and use the schematic as a reference to build the circuit. If you want to know how this circuit works, you can check out my other video related to the subject, link in the description. Connecting the button LED to the timer and then to the breakout board. Locate the positive and negative terminals on the button LED. Connect the positive terminal to the output pin of the timer and the negative to ground. Then connect an input pin to a pin number 14 on the breakout board and the ground pin to the timer ground. To power the timer circuit, I use a 5V DC power supply. Connect the positive to plus 5 volts on the timer circuit and the negative to ground. Make sure all circuits share a common ground. Creating the A-stop brain so it will not blink when the machine is under normal condition. On Mac 3, go to the Operator tab, scroll down to Brain Editor, enter a name for the brain you are going to create, click OK. This will open the Brain Editor. Click on the plus sign. This will open an Add Input window. Select Inputs. Scroll down the list until you find E-Stop and select it. Click OK to close the window. Now we have our first line of code, the E-Stop condition. Click on it to select it and then go to the plus sign again. This will open another window called Input Lobe. Select the Invert Radio button. This will create an instruction that inverts the signal, so if the stop condition is not active, this instruction will turn it on. 
The reason we want this signal on is because we need the breakout board pin number 14 to be high or 5 volts to keep the transistor from turning the timer circuit on, therefore avoiding the blinking light in a normal condition. Once pack 3 enters into an emergency stop by default, the software will shut all the outputs to the controller off, turning the timer on and making the LED blink. Ok, so go back to the inverted time and click on it. Finally, go to the terminator sign, which is the inverted T sign, and click on it. Select outputs. On the drop down menu, select output number 1 and click OK. This will terminate the instruction. We have to save the brain to the Mac3 folder onto the subfolder called brains, so it will appear on the program. Give it a name and save it. Close the brain editor. Now open the configure tab, go to ports and pins, Select output signals, scroll down to output number 1, make sure the port is selected as port number 1, and the pin as number 14. You can see down here pins 2 to 9, 1, 14, 16, and 17 are output pins. Be careful not to select a pin that the motor outputs might be using. Click apply, close the window, restore the software button, and make sure to save these settings. Once you finish with the configurations, go to the view tab, Click on Load Screens, select the screens that you saved previously, click Open. When it is loaded, it will be ready to be used. Now go back to the Operator tab, select Brain Control, click on the brain name that you chose, and check Enable, and click OK. This will activate the brain. Go back to the View tab, and click on the Save Current Layout. Go to configure and save the settings. Very well, so let me show you the system working. Got the remote control here. I installed a magnet here that I screwed to the back. Since I got cast iron table, so it's very convenient for me to put it anywhere in the machine. So if I touch the reset button here, you can see that it illuminates the switch and then I can reset it from the switch or I can activate it here and reset it or here so now let me show you the machine actually moving and stopping it with the emergency stop switch there you go I cannot do anything until I reset it I cannot reset it here until I restore it so there it is restore So this is it. All right, guys. So this is gonna be all for this video. I hope you liked the project. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, please do so and ring that bell so it'll get sent to you whenever I upload another video. And thank you very much for watching. And I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.